because Trump was on the ballot. What I think is really fascinating, though, when you look at Trump and the Republicans, is an evolution since January 6th, and in many cases, them following the lead of their own voters. We talk a lot about Trump having this power over Republicans in Congress, which he does, but it really stems from Republican voters, not so much Trump himself. They are the ones that continue to support Trump quite strongly, and it is that that Republicans in Congress fear, not so much saying no to Trump, but having their voters upset at them when they say no to Trump. And even Donald Trump really has followed the lead in some cases of conservative grassroots voters. When I interviewed him for In Trump's Shadow on May 5th, 2021, he told me that, in fact, he wanted to head to the Capitol with the crowd that gathered to hear him speak and that the Secret Service would not allow it. But he told me at that time, you know, if they had allowed me to be there, I don't think there would have been violence. And he seemed really mystified because he said to me, you know, my supporters, they support the police, and so I'm just sort of flummoxed at this idea that they would do what they did. In other words, he was looking at this and acknowledging that there was violence, thinking he could have done something about it. And by the time we hit midsummer of 2021, Donald Trump was talking about the insurrection at the Capitol, the riot at the Capitol, in very different terms, in terms that really mirror where his voters and where prominent conservatives ended up on this issue. And, and so in many ways, he is often a match that can inflame things, but the kindling is already there. You know, Willie, when I uh, campaigned, I realized I had to pick out people. I'd never been in politics before. I had to pick out people who voted in primaries regularly. And so I wouldn't go knock on all the doors of every Republican. I would knock on primary voters, and it was usually one out of three voters, usually about 33 percent. So those numbers have gone up a little bit. But when you look at primary voters, they're not even the majority of Republicans in many right. cases. You're talking about the most extreme, the most intense, the most hardcore base voters. Now, what that used to mean is that used to mean they were for smaller budgets. They were for balanced budgets. They were for a stronger military. They were for a more libertarian slash populist government. That's now changed. Obviously, the Republican Party, if you look at these numbers, they believe in conspiracy theories. Uh, a lot of them believe in in QAnon uh, theories. A lot of them believe in some of this just incredible insanity. So even when you look at people like Lindsey Graham and Kevin McCarthy that didn't have the courage of their convictions and backed down because what the base was saying, all right, well, they make that decision. They're politicians. They'll be judged at the polls. But again, that's not even a majority of Republicans in some districts and in some states. So again, January the 6th, uh, and, and even the following of these these people, the base of the party, is a splintering of the party as you see Republicans in the northern suburbs of Atlanta splitting off yeah. and voting for Biden. Republicans uh, in, in other suburbs around Philly, Republicans in suburbs around Detroit, breaking off voting uh, for Joe Biden. And again, and I think this is in part because of January the 6th, we talked about those Yunkin Trump voters. Again, time and time again, they're attacking Joe Biden and in and, and, and these focus groups for failing as a president. But then they're asked, do you regret your vote? Would you vote for Donald Trump again? Every single one of them says no. I think it goes straight back to January the 6th. Yeah.